Hi, I'm going to share with you a blog that I wrote on September 28th um, and the wonderful information that I now have 50,200 subscribers to my blog, sheriehansen.com. This one is called Exhaustion and Anxiety. I am repeatedly grateful for the CBC and the information it brings into my little attic hideaway up here. This morning they featured a show about the book Exhaustion, a history. The concept of exhaustion being a contemporary, particularly postmodern experience is one held far and wide in today's culture. The exhaustion that takes the contemporary focus is the chronic form of psychological fatigue triggered by biochemicals in a fight or flight syndrome, or at least that is what contemporary specialists believe it to be. So we buy into this definition. However, Anna Katharina Schaffner, the author, points out that the pervasiveness of weariness is nothing new. Galen writes about it in antiquity. The medieval period called it acedia, or an excess of acid in the body, which created a condition resulting in melancholia. <clears throat> it was considered a sin, and sloth was the result. Many monks were apparently afflicted by this disease. Hans Salia, who is the father of the re research on stress and resultant depression, was stressed himself when he could not find anything measurable about energy. He came to a standstill when he asked, what is energy? The only answer that has presented itself in the scientific field in Western science is the measuring of calories. What has been woven into the psyche of the modern cultural Akashi record belief system is that there is something out there which will steal our energy. The bottom line of the historical focus on the depletion of energy is, according to Schaffner, a belief in the waning of efficacy, a falling away of energy and vitality, inevitable as we age. But the real anxiety is about approach of death. So historically, philosophers, medical scientists, social scientists, psychologists have danced around the changing presentation of the concept of exhaustion. For medieval times, it was thought to be humors. During the Victorian era, a blanket of lassitude was the result of inventions, modernization, technology, and the education of women. Certain periods in history allowed only leisure classes, the luxury of exhaustion and depression. However, today, the worldwide sense that this is the first time, this is the worst time for exhaustion, with a personal sense of powerlessness, is an error. The fear of diminishment has been a constant in Western culture since the age of antiquity. A big difference between Western culture and Eastern culture is the concept of a mechanistic battery of energy that loses its charge. In contrast to Eastern belief that prana or chi are eminently replenishable sources. The person who is feeling a diminishment can go to a practitioner and reconnect with the source. Or the individual can go to a movement breath practice mode, which is believed to revitalize the body and the mind. For me, the most interesting concept in the interview is that each person, each decade, each cultural moment is so intensified that we lose perspective. The issue of facing one's death, of having a healthy, supportive connection to one's body, 
And of knowing we are not unique means that we can release the victim mode. We can see how connected we are to all who are alive on the earth and to all who have lived. Once we understand that, we are able to move in the world with more compassion for ourselves and for others. Thank you, CBC.